welcome back to this, which is episode hmm, eight, nine. I think it's either eight or nine. So you're probably wondering now, looking behind, where I am today. And it's fair to say that it's a fairly jagged coastline. That is the sea that you see behind. Um, and if I spin over that way, it's such a beautiful coastline. I am back in the West Country. I'm back in Devon today, um, more towards the the sort of eastern side of North Devon, um, in a place called uh, Valley of Rocks, or Valley of the Rocks, and it is really, really beautiful. The location to, that I'm going to later on is definitely going to be well worth sticking around for. It is absolutely a belter so stay around for that in the meantime i'm gonna oh, got grass or hay blown in my face in the meantime i'm gonna make my way over that way um and i'm gonna see what we can find and i'll catch up with you in a few minutes now for the observant amongst you you'll notice that i am missing my microphone in this uh, section of the video that's because unbeknown to me it had pinged off my jacket and fallen into the grass. Later in the video, I'll show you what I did to try and find it. And if you've got a Bluetooth microphone that you lose whilst out on a shoot, then what I did will come in handy to help. So I made it up to the top of the cliff, as you can probably tell. And once I got up here, I was going to put the drone up, that was the original idea, but the wind has picked up so much now that I think it would be a little bit foolhardy to put the drone up. I don't think it would do too well in these winds. So what I've done is I've framed up a few shots. Um, there's a couple of panoramas and I've had to bracket every single one to try and get them. I'll spin you around and I'll show you the, the view that I've been looking at and the various shots. And then if the shots turn out to be any good, I'll put them on the screen at the end. So just bear with me and I'll just spin you around. So this is the, the view basically. And you've got this really, really jagged coastline with these really tall cliffs. But what I love about this is the fact that you've got that green fields just at the top of those cliffs being lit up by the sun. And then you've got the really dark cliffs below it and the shadow of the cliffs just out onto the, the sea below that, and then you've got all of those waves crashing onto the shoreline below, in, with, which are highlight out in the white. And then if you come across, you've got this, it's almost like a sea stack, but it's, it's just basically this stack of rock jutting out from the cliff just below me. And it makes for an interesting shot, because it actually leads, like with these rocks here, and it leads you into the shot, which what I had is a wide angle shot of not only that, but that where the cliff has fallen away and you get those two indentations. And then you've got the ridge line of trees up the side and you've got these three paths and it all makes for a really, really interesting landscape. I think the, the contrast in the light and the colors and the textures, really, really great looking imagery. So. I've done quite a few shots and I've done single shots of, of this view here and then single shots looking up the, the cliff line um, with some of the field on the side and then I've done a panorama basically of the whole thing so all the way from there right the way across. Now you can't see it on this at the moment but there is cloud um, in those highlights at the top in the sky you can just start to pick it out there. But they actually, on the image, I've stopped it down to, to meter for those as well. So if those shots turn out any good, I'll put them up on the screen now.
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, because this could actually save you <laughs> quite a lot of money, I'm going to show you what I did to actually try and find it. So, so basically, it was lost in this area of grass. So you can see from, <clears throat> basically, from where the the last rock is on the on the right hand side the last big rock beside that patch on the road and all the green grass that you can see is the area that I had been in so up until where the road curves around and I'd been all over here and it was lost somewhere in here so it was a bit of a a needle in a haystack or should I say DJI mic in a haystack so the easiest way to do it what I found was actually if you can narrow down the area that you're in by using the Bluetooth connection on your phone and as soon as it loses connection so once you're out of that distance of connection it'll disconnect on the on the app and you can actually do it on both ends so then you've got an area in which to search and the only way to do it is systematically to walk up and down through that grass and luckily I managed to find it just poking out at the top of uh, two tufts of grass so yes I think I've just saved myself a hundred quid and uh, lesson learned well I've made it back to the car in one piece which is <laughs> definitely a bonus um, I didn't fall down any cliffs, I didn't fall down any banks, I haven't lost any equipment apart from the DJI mic. And how I managed to find that, I think it was more luck than judgment, but I think the, the technique for definitely for using the Bluetooth connection and then waiting for it to go out of signal definitely helps. Um, yeah, that's a lesson learned. The, these things, DJI, if you're watching this, you need to do something about your clips. They're not great. Um, this is on the magnet at the moment, but that clip is definitely not strong enough. If it can ping off that easily, then it's not strong enough to, to hold the mic in place. So my plan is now that we're gonna go to location number two. This one is what I'm pinning my hopes on for this video. If it doesn't work out well, it's just the way it is. You know, landscape photography is one of those things. You you can do the planning behind things and you can think of what shots you're going to do. And then when the weather doesn't play ball, there's nothing you can do about it. You've got to make the best of it. So what I'll do now is I'm going to head off towards location number two. And once I get there, I will let you know where it is. See you in a bit. Right, so as you can probably guess, we're at location number two. And the sea that you see behind me is, in fact, uh, the Bristol Channel. So we are still on the west coast, uh, well, southwest. And the area that we're heading to is a place called Porlock Marsh. And it's quite famous that in 1995 or 96, um, the sea burst through the sea defences and flooded a whole load of farmlands. So what was already a, a bog or a marsh, it was actually fresh water at the time, is now turning into a saltwater marsh. And the reason I'm heading there is that at high tide, when the sea comes back in, um, it creates this really amazing spectacle where these dead trees, um, which were killed by the influx of the sea, are now like skeletons amongst them. Now, if we get the right conditions, and I'm hoping we do, um, the sunset and the trees combined, plus with the, the water, could be pretty spectacular. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so I'm finally here. Um, as you can probably tell, this is high tide. And where I'm standing, <clears throat> normally uh, the sea will be right in, but the tide obviously isn't high enough today, which is a bit of a shame really, because it would have been quite nice to have the, the water under the trees. 
but um, it's just one of those places that you come back to when the when the conditions are right. Um, I, in truth, I didn't check the, uh, the the height of the tide. I thought full tide would be covering the whole lot, so that's a point for me to learn for for next time. So this is the basic shot. So we've got cloud behind, which is really nice. Um, and you can see those trees, or the skeletons of them anyway, um, just the way that they are silhouetted against the sky. Now I moved over here deliberately so I'd be able to separate all of them and get them um, so there was no overlap between each one. And you can see, obviously, it works wor really, really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the shot up. I'm going to wait until the sun comes back out because it as soon as it hits the wood of the trees it's absolutely beautiful it really is and, and, and makes a huge contrast so you've also got that channel which leads in and that's what I'm going to use as my leading line into the shot so let me get the camera set up and then uh, you'll get an idea now the Sun is coming out now so it really does start to open up those um, the, the lines within the trees themselves as well and the texture in the trees Okay, so let me just show you the next shot. And uh, as soon as I saw this, I saw the shot and, and thought instantly, especially when the sun hits it, of one of Salvador Dali's paintings. And it really is, especially with those, just those little wisps of cloud behind it. Uh, if I move here, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's that little whisper cloud, that's so Dali-esque. I think it's just the, the skeletal quality of the tree, plus the, the clouds and the blue sky, and, and the simplicity of it as well, is all what all of those elements contribute to to the, the actual image. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll um, frame it up on the back of the camera, and I will show you uh, very shortly. So here we go. This is it on the back of the camera now. Um, it's currently at one fifteenth of a second at f10, and it's ISO 64. And before those clouds disappear out of the frame, I'm just going to take uh, a couple of shots. And that hopefully... So that's obviously in raw. Now I've taken a couple of shots previous to this, um, which were a lot more in keeping with um, what I was trying to achieve. Um, so that'll give you an idea there really of, of the type of shot that I'm after. And once I get into post with that, that should look really, really good. So if that shot has turned out any good, I will put it up on the screen right now. Well, I think that's near enough uh, it for the day. Uh, the light is, as you can see, is, is starting to go. The sun has just dipped behind that hill over there. You can just see the remnants of it just shining through. Um, and I think the light is going to go fairly quickly. And I, I quite honestly don't want to get off the, this marsh before it, uh, it does go entirely. However, before we go, I've got one last shot. And... This one is possibly one of my favourites from today. So what I'll do is I'll spin you around and I'll show you what the, uh, the shot actually is. So this is the shot. Now, as you can see, um, we've got this little path 
leading out to that tree. Now, I'm fairly sure it's a path or a channel or whatever, um, but leading out to that single tree. And I've taken a few shots already just before the light started to go. And I have to say, it looks absolutely brilliant. The, the, the path I've put into the, the lower right corner of the frame and then that, if you look at that path, it just brings you straight into that tree. Um, and then you've got, obviously, the horizon. And you've got clouds on the horizon. Now, on this, it's not showing up, but um, on the camera, it definitely is. So, what I'll do is, as always, this has to be a composite. So, not only for bracketing for the light, um, because the highlights are completely blown out if you're exposing for the tree, um, but equally uh, to try and get some detail uh, within the path itself. So what I've done is I've created probably a, a 20 shot composite. Now you, you're going to think that sounds really, really ridiculous. But if you consider the amount of bracketing that you need to do to get the sky and the tree and the path and the detail in the, the foreground and then the focusing detail as well, it does come out to about 20 shots so what I'm going to do is I am going to do that in post-production if that shot does turn out to be any good then I will put it on the screen now <laughs> So the hat's on, and that can only mean one thing, that I am getting cold. As soon as that sun went down, the temperature went down with it. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's absolutely freezing cold. Spring, my backside, I'll tell you what, it's freezing. But, overall, I think today has been really good. Um, the first location possibly could have been better. If we hadn't got that really bright sun, I think we probably would have got something a bit better. But, you know, it's one of those things. Landscape photography is one of those uh, genres of photography that you can control so much of it. And as I said before, you can't control the weather. You've got to sort of roll with the punches, really. I think I've got a couple of shots of that first location that were quite good, really reasonably acceptable. I'll be interested to see what the... Uh, the shot from the drone looks like as well that last location i think really despite the fact that the sea the sea wasn't there that the tide wasn't there i think i actually got some really nice photographs and i'm looking forward to doing those in post-production you're going to, obviously going to see them before i do if that makes sense i think it does um so next week's uh, video as i say tune in for that because it is definitely one of the best locations i think in the uk for landscape photography without a shadow of doubt now as you can hear i'm now walking back through the marsh and i'm trying not to sink up to my knees in uh, mud um, and i've got a little stream to cross so on that note what i'm going to say is if you've liked today's video, then please hit that thumbs up button for me. And if you want to see more content from me, then definitely hit that subscribe button. Every like and subscribe, I keep saying this, really helps my channel grow and indicates to YouTube that you guys really like the content. So everything that you do helps me 100% and I really genuinely appreciate it. So, I'm going to say ta-ta for now, and uh, I will see you next week. Cheerio!